grace and peace of our Lord be with you. We are ending the 2023 God First Stewardship Annual Week, and many churches around the globe are celebrating the Stewardship Sabbath. Our theme for this special day is Impossible Givers. Impossible Givers are those individuals whose natural inclinations and life circumstances do not predispose them to give, but they end up giving and giving extravagantly. At the end of this week, the Spirit is most probably pleading with you to grow in your partnership with God. But probably you have not made a decision because you know your natural limits and your life challenges. One of the famous biblical examples of impossible givers is the Macedonians. Their generosity is well described in these words, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. How was such lavish giving possible during a time of scarcity and by a people with such limited resources? Apostle Paul provides a clear answer to this question. How was this possible? We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we made known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. The capacity and willingness of the Macedonians to give was a grace of God a grace from God, literally, a gift from God. Paul employs the word charis, translated grace, no less than six times to speak about the privilege of participating in the collection and how God enables believers to give. The generosity of the Macedonians was activated neither from the inside nor from the outside, but from His side. The power to give comes from the one who invites us to give. Let us reflect for some time on how God's grace can even transform the ravenous into impossible givers. The Bible tells how ravens, were transformed into channels of life. This incident is reported in 1 King chapter 17, verses 4 to 6. It was a time of extended drought, causing a severe famine in the land of Israel. Elijah, the prophet of God, was ordered to go to the brook, an isolated place, and to hide there. Water was available from the brook, but the absence of dew and rain would rapidly cause all the edible plants to dry up. Food became a challenge, but God had made provision for this situation. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 4. When God mentioned ravens, during a time of drought, Elijah was certainly perplexed. Usually ravens come to feed on animals or other creatures who die of hunger during a drought. Now God was saying that the ravens won't come to feed on your dead body, but to feed you because of the order I gave them. God could have chosen a more kind-hearted bird for this special mission, but he chose the ravenous ravens to be channels of life. Elijah, 
knew what the book of Moses says about this type of bird, which is often portrayed as a symbol of death. We read in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 13 to 15, And these you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kite, and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kinds. Ravens are categorized with the eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the birds of prey, those birds which have a voracious appetite. This was the type of bird that God had commanded to serve as a channel of life. Our God has a strange sense of humor, using ravens to feed his prophet during a drought. The Bible reports how the ravens responded to the command they received from God. We read in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 6, The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. In this passage, the writer highlights the constancy and regularity with which the ravens brought the food to Elijah. The brook dried up after some time, but the ravens did not stop being a channel of life until Elijah left the place. Interestingly, ravens don't carry things with their clothes and other, as other prey birds. The meat and bread must have been in their beak or bill. Hence, these ravens could not avoid seeing, tasting, and smelling the food they were carrying to Elijah. There was indeed a constant temptation for the ravens to divert the destination of the food to a different place or to a different stomach. Ravens are known to be clever at stealing food and hiding food in secret places. However, the Bible text witnesses that the ravens were faithful even when they were unsure about their own subsistence after the special delivery. The service delivery of the ravens informs us that God transforms and God transforms inside out. He creates, He creates impossible givers. Should we end this reflection only with a wow of amazement? As we conclude the Stewardship Revival Week of 2023, what can we learn from this short passage, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. As God's people, we have received an assignment, an assignment similar to the one given to the ravens. We read in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. We are called to bring food to the house of God, not bread and meat, but all the tithes. The context of this passage helps us understand that God is referring to the 10% of our income, but He's also referring to offerings. The Bible also highlights the regularity with which believers must fulfill the assignment of bringing food. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 7, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which He has given you. This text does not refer to the 10% tithe, but to offerings, 
No one is asked to give more than what one has received or what one's beak or bill could carry. However, this text states a common principle that applies to all according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which He has given you. As you are blessed, as I am blessed, we give in proportion to what we have received. However, there is a challenge, a challenge for implementation. These instructions and commands from God about giving, they filter through our human nature, and the two often conflict with each other. While God commands giving, generosity, and faithfulness, our natural inclination leads us in the opposite direction. This is probably why you are hesitant to grow as a partner with God, as a partner in God's final mission? Apostle Paul speaks about human self-centeredness in the well-known passage of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. There, he lists the 19 evil characteristics of the last days. His list starts with the expression, lovers of themselves. Philautos, love directed to self, and then mentions lovers of money as its first expression. Self-centeredness is at the essence of our human identity. It's not in our nature to give. Paradoxically, the God who knows us perfectly commands us to become giving channels. Our situation resembles strangely to the assignment given to the ravens in Elijah's story. Fortunately, God applies the exact solution to us as with the ravens. He transforms inside out. He can turn us into impossible givers. The transformation from a voracious to a generous being is not confined to the raven species. The Bible provides some mind-boggling examples of the change of self-centered individuals into extravagant and impossible givers. The widow of Zarephath was concerned about using what she had for a last meal for her and her son, but she ended up giving the last meal to Elijah. Zacchaeus the traitor, thief and greediest man of Jericho, finally spoke about giving and reimbursing instead of collecting and holding tight to his wallet. The poor widow in the gospel, with her very limited means, gave her two last copper coins and became a model of generosity. Impossible, impossible givers. Apostle Paul describes how the Macedonians were turned into impossible givers and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. The Macedonians, while struggling with life challenges, gave themselves first of all to the Lord and the Lord intervened for them and through them. What God requires from us may not always be easy or natural. Giving an offering beyond after returning time, giving an offering in proportion to the income we receive, giving the best as offering, it is often 
beyond human expectations, requiring some additional strength, which we seem not to have. The good news is God's Spirit empowers and transforms from inside out. He creates impossible givers. God, our God, can turn each of us into impossible givers, irrespective of our biological and social inclinations. As believers, we should not be discouraged by the gap between our natural selves and God's expectations in all areas of life, including giving. You can, I can become an impossible givers. He did it for the ravens. He transforms those who gave themselves, first of all to Him, into channels to bring food to His house. I invite you not to resist the prompting of the Spirit about how God wants you to give, which proportion or percentage of your income He invites you to give as offerings for 2024. Do not dwell on your natural incapacity or even on your past failures, but on God's transforming grace. Join me as we pray for the grace, for the grace of giving. Lord Father, we bless your name for life, for salvation in Jesus. We bless your name because you have called us to be partners in your final mission. And today you are telling us one of the greatest good news, Lord, that you transform those you call. We have been hearing the prompting of the Holy Spirit, inviting us to grow in generosity, to grow in giving, to grow in faithfulness and commitment. And today you are telling us your grace is sufficient. Your grace can turn us into impossible givers. Lord, humbly we bow in front of you. We want to accept the challenge that you are making for each one of us. And by your grace, we want to implement your will in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.